Yeah. Yes, I see yes. it. Oh. I'm Michelle Parisi. Stay tuned for the Long Island Filmmaker Show with host Jerry Parisi. You act like you don't want to listen when I'm talking to you. You think you ought to do, baby. Anything you want to do, you got to be crazy, baby. Just got to be. That's why I have a back thing. No, I'll be like, I'll be like this. Hi. I'm Jerry Parisi, and you're watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For my next trick, um, you're watching the Long Island Filmmakers Show. Um, I'm really, really lucky today to have two amazing guests. Uh, not to negate from last week's guests, Peter and Joyce were pretty, pretty informative on what they do. Uh, Peter, tremendous with the stage and his background, and of course Joyce Philbin with 150 billion movies. That even I'm jealous of the woman. Uh, but this week, we've got some very, very exciting people here today, and we have the producer, who also doubles as my manager in real life, Angela Galizio. She is the producer of the Umbrella Movie. Oh, okay. Hi. And whom, who I have to say, when I saw clips of this movie, I thought it was incredible. This is the funniest man I've ever seen, Mr. Chris Roach, known everywhere. <laughs> So, one of the most important things we can do is um, just ask you, Angela, where did you get this idea from? <laughs> First of all, it's Umbrella's Kill. Oh, Umbrella's Kill. Not the Umbrella movie, Jerry. <laughs> get it straight. <laughs> you see what happens to me when I bring my own manager on board? Umbrella's Kill. And, and we do have clips on that. But before we see clips, before we go any further, and before she hits me with her shoe, she's known to do that, mm -hmm. um, let's go to commercial. We'll be right back. Professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. You're watching the Long Island Filmmaker Show with host Jerry Parisi. So while we were gone, I did get hit by the shoe. It's Umbrella's Kill. Umbrella's Kill. And it's, of course, a comedy. Um, so we're with Angela here. So start telling us about Umbrella's Kill, where it came from, and why Chris is smiling wildly on that <laughs> side. <laughs> well, Umbrella's Kill came to me from Christopher Roach. He, um, I manage him as well. Angela, Are you go, jealous? go like that in front Are of his face. Are you jealous? Christopher Wake up, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Am I jealous? Are you jealous? Ah, he's taller than I am. Yeah. How can I not be jealous? You know, the comedy back and forth here. Just yeah. Like, you know, just relax, Chris. Take a deep breath, buddy. I'm okay. Anyway, he sends me the script. He says, Ann, do you want to read the script? And I said, sure, I'll read it. I read it, and it was so funny. So I get back in touch with him. I said, all right, let's make a movie. And, and we made a movie. And we made a movie. We made a movie. It was a lot of fun. It was. Uh, now, is this a, like a, a mafia kind of movie? Does this umbrella put hits out for somebody? No, it, it actually, it, it all began um, on the way to an audition Oh. Uh, in the city. I was going for an audition, and uh, somebody hit me in the eye with a golf umbrella. 
It was raining. Ooh. Yeah. No, so then I, I started I started talking about it on stage and how, you know, I was walking and this woman, I, I thought it was a golf umbrella, a patio umbrella. She's walking, it's huge, and it hit me in the eye. And I just wanted, to, I was sitting down one day trying to expand on the joke. And I'm writing at the local library, writing as I always, I like to write at the library because I feel like if I don't work, somebody's going to come up and smack me. <laughs> it's, just, it's that, it's like, you know, so I'm writing and then I'm like, you know, this is like, this could be like a great sketch. And then I'm writing some more. I'm like, this is longer than a sketch. This is like a short film. And then I wrote the thing and edited it and rewrote it. And then I showed it to Angela. And I wasn't sure what she would say. But when she said she loved it, I'm like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> Did she hit you with a shoe? I just want to double check. That was somewhere in the, towards the end of the film. Oh, good. Yes. So, so this really happened for him. And isn't that funny where real things happen like that? Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's, it's a mockumentary. So it's like we... Although it's addressing a problem, uh, it's really, when I started telling this joke on stage, so many people would approach me saying, I work in the city and I hate those umbrellas. Why do these people bring these golf umbrellas into Manhattan? And um, so that's kind of, yeah, again, that's kind of where it, it took off. So these umbrellas are really just for Manhattan. They're really not for any place else. But they're big. They're big. You know, if you're on a city street, you should not be using a golf umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost like common sense. Who brings a golf umbrella into Manhattan, you know? On 7th Avenue. As opposed to like 5th or Lexington. Because yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know? It's, uh, so the, the film, it's like, I, you know, we do have, we have an actual petition online to ban yes, that I would like to present do. to the mayor, Mayor de Blasio. Oh. Um, to ban these oversized umbrellas because uh, I found that you other people. Yes, I have a little peripheral damage over here. I don't even know how many fingers I'm holding up right now. <laughs> peripheral. <laughs> I have peripheral. What is it? Two, three? I don't know. <laughs> peripheral. <laughs> peripheral. Uh, That's right, Chris. Yeah, Peri but in the, in the film we have uh, it's mockument a mockumentary based style. Um, we have a. Um, a scene from my group therapy okay. with other umbrella victims, okay. or accident victims. Yes. We have, uh, you know, there's a few words from my um, eye doctor. He's in there as well. And also a scene where I'm teaching umbrella safety to children and they get thrown out of the <laughs> And True. He gets thrown out of the classroom. Yeah. This wow. Security, this big security guy throws me out. We have a clip for that? Do we? I believe we have a clip. I'm Chris Roach. I'm a professional stand-up comedian, actor, and writer. I was actually hit in the eye with an oversized umbrella. back that was that was excellent um you know i had gone to i guess the comedy club is where you had one of your first uh, yes big events and and how did that work out it was amazing people just are so supportive of us and this film mm -hmm. our premiere we had over 300 people show up down port at uh port uh what is it theater three in port jeff theater yeah three. Okay, yeah we wow. sold out that house it was crazy but the laughter because i think everybody can just relate to the film but the comedy in it is unbelievable. Yeah, well, that was uh, what I really liked. We showed a, the film twice so far, and each time I did the same thing I do when I do my comedy shows. I put a tape recorder in the back, and I gauge the audience's response, the and, and then I re-edit with, with the editor. We sit down, and we re-edit with the new editor, because Angela Foy, the last editor. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> two days before we showed the film. throw a shoe at him, and, uh, too? Oh, forget it. It's like a boomerang. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard. No, but... Uh, <laughs> Tough Italian woman here. You know? <laughs> so hey. even still, I mean, we, we showed it in a, in a film festival, and even as I'm watching it, I'm like, all right, let's... It's like the editing never stops. I just... There's got to come a point where I'm like, just get this away from me. Don't let me touch it. Oh, you want to hear some really good news? Yeah, I do. We had three nominations at a film festival. Yeah. Really? It's the, yes. Long, the Long Beach International Film Festival. That's nice. Now, that's a good film festival, too. I've, I've gone to Belmore, I've gone to the one in the Hamptons, 
I've never quite made, because of timing, Long Beach, but from what I understand, it's got incredible movies in there that they show. And I guess if you got three nominations. Three nominations. We did so well. That's pretty impressive. And where does the movie, where do you want it to go from here now? Well. I have no idea. I'm thinking think maybe, you know, Comedy Central, a little buzz about really? Comedy Central. Yeah, let's go to Comedy Central. We'll yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thought never crossed your mind. You know, you know that's the whole, that's the whole thing. This thing just took on a life yeah, of its own. It, it went from being a bit on stage, and there were times I got to tell you during the production, I'm like, I think I bit off more than I could chew here. It was like, but you know, with the permits and getting people involved, and, and no money, if, like no yeah, money. If I knew wow. everything that was entailed, that might have discouraged me. But I was, we, I learned as I went, and we learned as we went, and sure, you know, we learned, uh, you know, there were some people that we worked with on this project. That, that we, we will, will never work on. Yes, that is true. <laughs> that is true. I don't understand. Like, there are some people that, the people that worked on the project that, like, this represents you. This project represents you. You figured you want to give it your all. But, you know, there are some people, okay, we won't use them again, but there are a couple people like the uh, production designer, the, which we would definitely, oh, she was incredible. you know, people that just go above and beyond. They, they realize it's a low budget, but they also realize that their name is attached That's right. to attached. it. That's the most important thing. Right. Your you name know. is on it. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's probably the most important thing anybody could ever do. Whether you sign on to a movie to be paid the union scale, or if it's someone's movie that you said yes to, or TV show, yeah. uh, or, or anything. In my world of advertising, it's the same thing. If you sign on to a project, you have agreed to whatever it is, whether it's nothing, somebody's lunch, or union pay, that you are going to do the best you can. Yeah. And, and I've got to say something that brings on a very important thought by who you wouldn't work with. From what I learn and what I feel and what I live through, I realize there are a lot of people out there that, that slow things down. They, they become yes. jealous of you. Yeah. Yes. You would know more than that, Angela. Oh my yes. God, especially this one guy, his name's, uh, I'm not saying <laughs> <laughs> I love to say his name, but I'm not gonna say it. I'll say his name. We call those the blood suckers. <laughs> the blood suckers, that sounds like a new movie, watch for it. He's um, a real, <laughs> beep, 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 exactly. Um, yeah. let, let me ask you something. Um, ask away. How do you deal? Yeah, I should ask. Yeah, Angela, ask put me some more movies, Angela. What? Get me a reel. I know, I She's know. Like, Angela Can is... I say Fungul? <laughs> Get me the damn reel already. She is so good. You know, it's like, <laughs> I couldn't have done it without her. You know what, Chris? I am, uh, She's good. I'm passive aggressive. I'm too nice. And there was, like, this one guy was really dragging But you're taller than everybody in Doesn't the world. Doesn't matter. On the matter. I'm 6'6", six, six, like but the inside, big. I'm 4'11". Yeah. Wow. You know, so mm -hmm. it, there was one guy that was really holding back production to the point where you know I was like, oh, let's give him another, let's give him another chance. Maybe I'll give him a little more money. Then all of a sudden, I was like, Angela, you will get him. Go sick him, sick him, Angela. <laughs> and I'm hiding behind her. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> you, you're out of here. Oh, and funny. get your bed. Get out of here. You're out of here. You're never working on Cockham again. <laughs> Ron Conkham with the real Hollywood of Long Island. Yeah, that's, that's right. it. That's right. That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go to a commercial. We'll be right back. We've got a couple more questions for everybody. And uh, uh, I want to find out exactly what you do to these bloodsuckers. That's what I need to know. Okay. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and Ronkonkoma, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patients' cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, 
she has improved tremendously and continues to pr improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. I'm Erica Conway and you're watching MadhouseTV.com. You're watching the Long Island Filmmakers Show with host Jerry Parisi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I got to really watch the budget. They're clapping too much. I paid them a quarter each tonight. Jerry. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> um, so, Angela. Yes, Jerry. We were, we were just trying to figure out, because I'm encountering them now. It's like, oh, wow, where did that come from? And the loss of friends as you go up the ladder is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the jealousy is worse. What do you do? What, what do people do? I mean, you, you handle so many actors and actresses. I do. And they must come to you like Mother Confessa. What, what do you say? <laughs> Fess up. What do you say to these people? I'm polite to a point, and then I just cut them off. Is that what you really do? You have to. Yeah. You have to, because as you're going up, they're trying to bring you down, and you can't have that because you're on and up. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to go back down. No, no. No, so you just have to cut them off. You know, so a lot of people in this industry don't like me because you know how I am. Well, I think you're tough. You're no nonsense. You certainly got me great. You know, I, was a, I got a great part from Angela in Court Red Handed. And uh, I actually have never seen the episode because that's, that's <laughs> what I do. I YouTube. never see me. But uh, it probably is on YouTube. But the reality was I was there and I was the manager of a store. And, uh, by the way, probably not allowed to say this because <laughs> it's supposed to be real, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, it's a good show. You watch that court redheaded. If you <laughs> <laughs> Episode 1515. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Angel um, got me my first acting role. What was your first acting role? I was uh, a mental patient on One Life to Live. <laughs> And Angela got me that part. Yeah. Here I thought you were a street lamp when I saw how sized you no, were. No, it, it was wonderful. It, it ran for like maybe two months. Yes. And we were excited that it was going to run further, and then they decided to kill me. Oh, no. Yeah, we were so psyched. We're like, all right, Chris, this is it, this is it. Yeah. And then he goes, Ange, don't get so excited. I've been killed off. Yeah, they killed me. <laughs> but the, I was lucky, though, somebody saw me on that show. And they cast me in an off-Broadway play of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, wow, that's great. As a mental patient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one was, thing uh, leads to the other, yeah, you know? Yeah, it was off-Broadway. It was Smithtown. <laughs> <laughs> Way off-Broadway. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It was a Smithtown Performing Arts Center. Oh, I had fun, though. I had fun. Well, yeah. let me ask you something. Does now Smithtown trump Ron Konkama? Uh, it's, uh, mm. it's more of a lateral move. <laughs> 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 well, 
want to double check this because, you know, <laughs> in this business, she'll tell you, you take the wrong thing, you go down. Am I right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you got to take the right. Absolutely. So far, you've been taking a lot of rights. You're all the way up there. Yeah, I won't let him go wrong. He's got to go up. Yeah. yeah. You mean taller than 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, does the camera open up big enough? Can you stand up a minute? I want to just... I want to just see what you want me to stand up. <laughs> You're freaking him out, Jerry. You're freaking him out. Should I stand up? This I want to show, stand up. I want to show you how tall I am compared to me. This was not the kind of. How tall he is it, compared to you. This is That's me. What you meant. And, and this is him. Look, he's worse than the Jolly Green Giant. He pets well. I have a bald spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I doubt it. My hairdresser would never let me. Go. Cindy does my hair. Cindy from Atmosphere does my hair. And, and too many people, they, everybody asks me, who gets that hair done? Because my hair's really white. God forbid I say that too many times. It is, it's white. You'd never know that. That's how good no, it's No, that's not. a good dye job, but Jack. It's a great dye job. Yeah. But, but the reality is, <laughs> <laughs> the reality is there is no bald yeah. spot back there. She would, she would tell me, I'd, I'd freak. I don't know what I would do. I'm like Samson without the hair. All right, There's enough about your hair. Oh, talk, right. about, talk to us about us. Come so on. So tell us a little bit more. About your <laughs> tell me about you. What do you think about my hair? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what on, about Jerry. your hair? Talk about your hair. Oh, um, my hair. I wish I had your hair. See, it goes right back to it. <laughs> the two of you listen to you. We're impressing the manager. We're getting more jobs. He said you look like Joe Piscopo. No, I do not look like, nor, nor do I look like Robert Downey Jr. or anybody else. I am Jerry Parisi. Who told you Listen, Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? This is why I love my manager. <laughs> um, it's hard for me to look, think of it that way. Look, he can't even speak. I, no, I mean, I'm in I'm the only one who you. could just shut you up. There you like go. That. Seriously. Just like it's, that. Boom, down. She got, can ground she's you. She's both yes. shoes tonight. So where do you want this to move and go? I mean, how, what's the next step to get it there? Let's put it that way. Well, we're re-editing again. Yeah. And, and then uh, there's a couple of other, there's some other festivals that I would like to try to enter. Yes. Like, uh, I know the Screen Actors Guild has a short film festival they do. And yeah, we were part of SAG. We, we took SAG on for this. Oh, you yeah. had to. It's you a had SAG to. You are SAG, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. you have been SAG. SAG for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, besides that. <laughs> yeah. Very saggy. saggy. There's a joke don't in there and there's a shoe you, next to don't me Don't let now. him tell you about his powder. You don't want to know about his powder. What about your powder? No. I use lots of baby powder because yeah. I sag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. Right into the toilet. See, yeah. the difference between you and I is baby oil, baby. Your baby oil? That's it. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Those Italians and their oil. Oh. Those Italians and their Earl. It's not baby Earl. It's Olive Earl. It's Olive Earl. That's what he's using. Could be. Use yeah. Where do you put olive oil? Where do you put it? Anywhere. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's get back to a, a normal subject here, your movie. Um, so besides playing in these places, where else has it played before? Because um, I know it's been a lot of places. I've my dad's been, house. Your dad's house. <laughs> my computer at home. And her computer. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> So far, I, I, we've shown it uh, one, two, three times. Yes. Nice. Three times. But you did, in all honesty, you did fill up the Port Jefferson Cinema. Yes, the, absolutely. Um, and it's yes. Uh, yeah. Theater, Theater three. three. Theater yes, Three. Yes, we did. And yeah. that, that was over 300 people. And yeah. I was yeah. actually too late in getting in there. There was a, when, leave it to me, I'm always busy. But what happens is um, I go to buy the tickets online and it said sold out. And I was... You could have got them at the door. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I never thought of that. <laughs> could have got them at the See? door. That's why he needs me. Yeah, I need her. I need her. But, but um, when's the next place or when's the next... We're not telling you. What, would you like to tell the audience? <laughs> <laughs> because in my opinion, you want your movie seen. We'd no? like to tell you, but we really have no idea. We have no clue, honestly. No, there's a, um, there's a few uh, festival deadlines that we have to uh, get this film ready for. Um, again, the Screen Actors Guild has a one, and I would love for it to be in next year's Hamptons Film Festival. I, you know, I mean, you always want to think big. Like, I was even thinking, like, Tribeca, but sure. for them, the film has to be the, uh, it's got to debut there. It's got to be the first showing. Yeah. And because it, I, I, thought, I thought that would be a perfect place for it. New Yorkers, this is a problem that people live in the city. They, they hate it. And, uh, but no, it's, it's got to be, a, you know, debuted there. But if they want to follow up on the film, you can go to our website, 
Now there's a good idea. The website, and it's a nice yes. website too. Umbrellaskill.com. Umbrellas, floral, kill.com. I really wanted to be in the Tribeca Film Festival. Don't cry, Chris. <laughs> Chris, don't cry. Mr. De Niro, if you're watching this. Did you know I met Robert De Niro? Oh, you did? Shut up, On Jerry. Falling in Love, yeah. yeah, yeah. Long God. Ago. Right. Um, what good is that for us that he met him? Yeah. Well, did you get a nice his number? Man. Go talk to him. Did you get his number Tell for us? Won't, you know. I didn't get his number. No, I was go. <laughs> he was popping an umbrella, poked him in the eye, and that was the end of Robert. That was De Niro. the first time I saw him. Popped I'm starving. <laughs> go out to the green room. This have a cr- have a have a candy. Have a candy. Have Take a butterscotch. Have a What's your next movie planned? You oh, guys? it's already written. Oh, let's it's hear called, about it. It's called The Guy in the Purple Leather Shoes. Nice. Yes. And it's about a. Uh, Show them your purple leather shoes. Pick them up. It's my purple leather shoes? It's. Yes. It's about a man in. Purple. You didn't know I was wearing a purple thong tonight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can't it's about that. a man in purple leather shoes who has yeah. a TV show. Really? And he's between, he's between barbers. <laughs> hairdressers. He's between hairdressers. Never hear the end of this one, that's for sure. Yeah. He's going to email you. How's your hair, Jerry? He will. He'll text you. Jerry, how's that curl? It's coming along good. Yeah. Got my soup. It's growing out. It's a little great. We, ha- we could do a whole show on your hair. Yeah. We could do a whole show on my hair. You know, too right. bad it didn't come off. It could do its own show. Right. Oh, we have a friend whose hair comes off. Yeah. Oh, yes. really? We could what, put him on your show. What movie? You, know, you can put him on your show. With the hair, too. With the hair. With, the ha- with his hair. With his hair. Pop it How on and off. How lucky am I? Right? <laughs> you, want your sh- you, want to t- you want the show back? Oh, so, so, Umbrellas Kill <laughs> is Umbrellas. Umbrellas Kill. S. Kill dot com. Right? Yes, sir. And can they get in touch with you from emails or tell you anything? Yeah, they can reach out to us on the website. They can reach out to you on the website. And right? s- sign up. Us. Yes, they can sign our petition. Sign the petition. Sign the petition. Uh, we're going to be presenting it to uh, Mayor de Blasio in the f- near future. Yeah. And well, let me get this straight. Yes. You, you, j- just, just because. So here we have this premise that umbrellas really kill, and a movie's made about it. It's a good idea. I could see them killing. Are I you could see a, they have been. Are you mocking us? No, I'm just want to. Uh. I want to ask you about the petition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they have been. Uh, because what if they say no? To kill. Go ahead. <laughs> There it the is. damn shoe always comes off. Look out for that Italian leopard print shoe. Never get hit by one of those. It's the worst. Um, what is the hope for the petition, really? All kidding aside. All kidding aside, I really like you know the, how they, they, they say they would write a summons if you jaywalk, which they never do. But they should really start... Writing summonses. Or b- making, creating more awareness. Hey, people, you know what? Use your head. Just wear, use your regulation size umbrella, okay? Maybe. You know, if you have an umbrella that could fit a family of five underneath, that's a problem. Not for the family of five. But, um, let's go back to some of the production values in the movie, because I want to I wanna ask you about those. Um, so what are you shooting on? The camera. Oh, it's... Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's like... I don't, oh, God. I don't know. H, V, D, C. I don't know. All right, so listen... Um, Guys, go to the website, UmbrellasKill.com, and please, if you happen to see the movie coming to one of your local film festivals, support this movie. It's very important now that it's got a petition behind it. <laughs> Peripheral. <laughs> My guest next week, um, forget about the that words. for the moment. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> I think they've knocked me right off my leg. <laughs> anyway, um... Let's hear it up for Angela Galizio, g and Management, executive producer of that um, show, Umbrellas Kill. And, of course, Mr. Chris Roach. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. Yes. You're very welcome. Performing tonight at McGuire's Comedy Club. Are you? You should have said that before. Chris is performing tonight at McGuire, McGuire's, McGuire's Comedy Club. Where is that again? Bohemia. Bohemia. McGuire's Comedy Club in Bohemia. Bohemia. So you may want to go there tonight, right after you watch our show, and write in about how good it was. All right, we'll see you next week. (laughs) This has been the Long Island Film... (laughs) Filmmakers Show.